Well, welcome back to part eight. It is good to have your company again. So last time we finished off with doing this. Now this is sat in a page presently called Wire Customer Dash. What we want to do is to get it into our main page, our main app page. So if you remember a few parts ago, we covered using clean URLs to separate our different sections so that when a user selects it, we, we open the right option here from our content container so we need to add one for our customer so we will do that first and foremost so we'll just add a group first of all we'll make sure that we select our content container and then we will add a group in there okay that's called group r we will just push that to the sorry we will just push that to the end once we give it a, well, we'll make it last, uh, we will just make that a column container as I think we did with the other one, if I remember rightly, yeah. So we're just gonna call this G customers. Okay, so that's gonna be our container. And then last time in there, we also put like a label in there. That was more to demonstrate what was being selected as you click through. We're not gonna do that here. So let's just um, clear that and what we'll do is we will, sorry, we need to, that again. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that 100% uh, wide and 100% height. And because we put it on our container, we can see that that has actually left some padding there as well. Right, so this is where, this is the group that's gonna fit in our particular dashboard and everything else that we're gonna put on customers. However, if you remember, we had a conditional on here that says that the option selected has to be the right one for it to display. So we need to do the same thing on here. So we're gonna make it invisible on page load. It's gonna collapse when hidden. And then we need to put the conditional on there. So we need to say that the apps option selected is and it needs to be customers and then we can set it to visible so we've got all of our content on here so we can't get it from this page into that page what we have to do is to use a reusable so we're going to turn all of this content here into a reusable so if you're not familiar with reusables they're pretty much what they say on the tin which is the elements that you can save and then pop them in other pages. And reusables are really good because they're kind of bubbles only way that we can componentize our system so that we can put things in different places and just work on individual components. They're not components per se, and I believe that Bubble are working on like a component engine, uh, which would be great when it does, but for the time being we have to make reusables fit like a component basis. So, and that's, if we look at our element tree, that was exactly why I created a container. So I didn't just drop, drop everything on the actual page. I created a container because what we can do with that, okay, I need to make sure I've got my container selected. Otherwise it's not gonna work. There we go. And then just convert into a reusable element. So what is it gonna be called? Okay, now because I'd already done this previously, if you remember, I was working from one I'd already done. We do already have one, so I'm just gonna call this something different. I'm gonna call this customer section, okay? And we're just gonna create that. See, we've already got one called customer section. So what I'll do is uh, I will rename it something else. So convert into a reusable element and I will call it customer customers section. How about that? And so we're gonna create that Okay, and it's landed it pretty well as we wanted it to do. So there's no problem with that at all. So now what you'll notice is that if we look in here, now we don't get that group. Okay, so it's kind of got rid of that for us, which is why we didn't want to set too much on that container group. Because then if we start setting different layout options on there, then it will affect this. If we go to our main page now, and we have a look, 
in our reusables right at the bottom so it's customers section that we need so make sure that we've got our customers group selected and all we need to do then is just to drop it in okay and then we've got it there so all I want to do with that one is just to make absolutely sure that it is 100% of its and uh, we, we can just leave that as it actually we only need sort of about 160 in height something along those lines just let's do that say one 170 okay so if we now run that let's run it from our user take it out of debug mode and select customers we now get our little dashboard okay there's a few housekeeping things that we need to do with this okay but I don't really want that to get in the way right now uh, I've had a request from I need to sort this out as well we'll do that we'll do that in a second uh, but I've had a request uh, to do with the, the navigator about how we can get it to vertically scroll and there's this to sort out and there's one or two other little bits and bobs that I'm I'm not happy with and this is something that you do when you when you create the app there's always things that you're not quite happy with that have got like rough edges that you need to go back and do some housekeeping so I'm going to do that in a bonus video so if you're worried about that this doesn't look quite right when you go over the orange or whatever that's absolutely fine we'll go back and we'll cover that this we can sort of sort out here this is something this is my fault because it's something that i did while you weren't watching which is to create what i wanted to do is to make it so that when the user selected an option like customer that it would highlight in a different color okay so yeah so i wanted to put an effect in where when they as well as the hover is that when an option is selected i wanted to just make sure that we get like a different selection so you know what is is currently selected and open so I'll just paste it from the other one and I'll explain it as I go uh, I just need to, to change that okay so what the, all the condition is is that the apps option selected custom state is the current cells nav option so in other words what we've what we've marked as being selected based upon the URL if it's the current cells option in here then we're going to set the background style to a gradient and then we're going to have a sort of a gradient green to, to show us that it's been selected. So if we just have a look at that. Okay, we can see that that's selected there as well. And we get this effect. Right, okay. So let's just have a look at reusables for a second and what they are and why we use them. And the main reason now is that what I can do, I can now work entirely here. Right, I don't need to work in the main page, and anything that I change in here is going to do that. So, for example, I'm now going to there's no hover effect, or if there is, it's a minor one, it just changes the border style. So, let's say that I wanted that so that when you hover over it, you just get like a gray border with a transparent background. So, let's have a look at that. So, all I will do is then is to say background style is going to be none and let's say that the the border color is going to be like a a kind of a dark gray okay i'm just putting one in there i should really copy it from a standard color uh, but just to demonstrate this so i've done that completely in here within this this page uh, but now I don't need to save that or change that, okay? I don't need to do anything in here. It's automatically reflected. So if I refresh that, okay, then I get that. I need to change the text color, obviously. Uh, but again, I don't do that in the main page. I do that on the component, on the reusable. So all I need to do there, we use the same text. In fact, I can just grab that from, uh, from somewhere, probably from here. The color it's always good to be consistent okay it wherever you can which is why you use styles let me put that style back okay and so we then can say the font color 
okay and again I don't even need to go back to the main page okay we can put a transition in there if we wanted to but you get you get the picture so the thing with reusables is that as I say it enables you to develop your system in sections if you've got more than one of you it enables you to just work on each component in turn now there are complexities involved in using reusables and and you need to be aware of them so for example if there's something in here that i need to rely on the main page for i can't do that because think of a reusable as like a black box okay everything inside this it has no knowledge of the outside world or the outside app it's a completely self-contained unit okay however what you can do you can call things from inside the page in here so if I've got custom states on the reusable I can change those in the main app if I've got workflows in here I can change those okay what I can't do is from in here call a workflow or change a custom state that's sat on the main page okay it has no knowledge of the outside world so with the, armed with that knowledge you basically then have to configure how you develop the app around that and that's going to be important going forward okay because it'll, it'll determine how we make decisions on how we're going to develop certain elements of the application but reusables we're going to we're going to use everywhere okay we, we're very rarely going to come back to this to this page other than to put reusables on the page now what a lot of people do is they will actually put like the navigator inside a reusable I've seen people who've shown off that their main page has like virtually no workflows on there at all, like maybe like four or five workflows and the rest is all done. So if we look at our workflows, we've actually got quite a lot on there because we're dealing with the, not too much, we're actually dealing with the, the navigation, okay? Many people will deal with the navigation using a reusable so that their workflows are not actually sat on there. Reusables are also good. You can create a reusable to like put your logic in there. So let's say you've got functions that can be called everywhere from wherever from different parts of your system. You can then have a have a reusable that is just used for workflows, and then you drop it wherever you need to do it on the main page, and then are accessible from from everywhere. Then, so reusables, as I say, are indispensable part of using Bubble, and it's something that. A lot of people don't get to thinking it's very complicated. They're not complicated. You've just got to be aware of the limitations and how to get around them. And one of the things that you've got to look out for and be aware of is using reusables within reusables. That's when things can become a little bit tricky. For example, let's say that we put something behind this new customer that loads another reusable to load up the custom form but that's when again you, you've just got to think a little bit out of the box and and sometimes to make your life easier plugins are necessary for that and we'll go through that as well again plugins you know a lot of people sort of you know are scared to death of plugins and some of them for my workflow when i'm developing my apps are absolutely indispensable and there's one or two that help with using reusables as well so we'll move on now and we will try and recreate in QuickBooks, when you cl click New Customer, you get this form, okay? And let's have a look at how this is working. So, if you look, it's floating over the main content and it's coming in from the right. So, it's floating over the main the main group. So, what's actually happening here is the equivalent in Bubble of a floating group. If you imagine we use a floating group with our navigator, but we put a group behind it so it, it doesn't give that impression, it actually is a floating group. So we need a floating group that's going to float across here, but on the right hand side, okay? In the same way as this does when you click new customer. Now, this is where we've got to think about our reusables. Because in Bubble, you can't make a floating group be part of a reusable. It has to be part of the page. And we're on a single page app, so our floating group just like our navigator has to exist on the main page. So if we think that through then, we need to get this button here, this new customer button that is living in a reusable element. It's not, on, it's not physically in our page, we just 
embed it into our page, the element. It's not actually on our page. So we need to get something to when they click this new button that it will load a floating group on the main page. So the issue with that, of course, is that as we just covered, the reusable has no knowledge of anything outside itself. It's a completely self-contained unit. So it doesn't know how to call back to the page and say, listen, they've clicked this button, now I want this floating group to, to, to display. So this is how you think about reusables, about the complexity of them. Not the complexity, but just overcoming the fact that you can't see outside of the reusable from within the reusable. However, the page has knowledge of the reusable because our reusable group is sat in here, okay? A copy of the reusable. So how can we do this? Luckily, Bubble does give us the mechanism by which we can we can trigger this, okay? So what we're gonna do is on our reusable, let's go to our reusable here, and what we're gonna do is, let's actually select our reusable itself. Now again, another thing to remember here is that we're going to put a custom state on our reusable itself on the actual reusable not any of the elements or containers inside it on the reusable itself so we'll add a custom state to our reusable and we're going to call this last action and this is going to be we're just going to cut make it a text for now now it's important when using reusables as well is as i was saying when you put a custom state directly on a reusable, that custom state is then visible to the page that contains it. Okay, so for example, if I was in, if I go back to the main page and I stick a workflow in here somewhere, I'll just, I'll just add an action, and let's say I wanted to set a state, what I can do then is I can then customer section A, which is our reusable, okay, I then have access to that last action. So that means that becomes like a public. So so I can I can expose that that custom state to the main page or to anything that, that contains this this component, this reusable. Okay. So that's just something to to bear in mind. If I put custom states on anything else, they won't be visible outside. Okay, so that's really important. So you want to keep custom states that are just operating within the reusable within the component, we'd have it on these. If we're gonna have a custom state that you want to expose to the rest, to, to its container, which in this case is the page, then you would have it on the actual reusable. And if you're into programming, that's kind of how you would manage private and public variables effectively. Okay, so we've got this custom state here called last action. So now what I want to do then is I want to set that when they click the new customer button. So we'll click to start edit workflow. So what I will do as always is I'll create a custom event and I will call that set last action. And I'll just set that to green. And then from in here, well, actually what I want to do is I want to add a parameter to that. And I just want to say, uh, just put action. Okay. And that is just a type of text. Uh, and it's not optional. It's not an array. So it's not optional. And then from in here, I can then uh, call the custom event, set last action. And let's say I'm going to say that the last action is just going to be nc for new customer just just as a text i could have this as an option set so that we've got a, a set list of, of actions that we could take but i'm just going to set it on this one for now okay so that's going to pass this in and all i'm going to do here is i'm just going to set the state of our last action to action okay um, so all we've done there is I've, just, I've complicated by adding a custom workflow, but all I've done is to set the state of the last action custom state to what we pass in here, which is just NC. Okay, I've added, added logic there, which I probably shouldn't have done. But anyway, that's all we've done, and that's all we're going to do on this side of the equation, on the actual reusable side of the, of the equation. So what I can do then on the page, because I've got access now, because that custom state is on the reusable level, 
okay and it's in our custom states for the reusable what I can do then is in our app is I can have a different type of event that is called do when a condition is true and I, I always color these again you do your own thing but I always color these as purple so that I know what they are, they are because they're special events in bubble that is looking for a condition to be true and then it will fire so if you imagine if you imagine now we've got access to that custom state on our reusable and and when they click the button that gets set so what we need to do then is to look out for when that changes now one thing that's important with when you do a do when condition is true is that in the run this is that you do set it to every time because otherwise it runs once and then it never runs again okay useful in some circumstances but not in this case so what we want to do well, well we need to set what condition is true so the condition is that on our customer section a which is our reusable our customer dashboard and it gives us access to last action then what we can do is to say is and then we can say nc okay so therefore it's looking for when when we change that custom state on the reusable when they click the button new customer that sets a custom state to nc this is then listening to that and then it can say okay let's perform an action okay and then we can load up our floating group that's going to contain this here okay so if we add a floating group on our main page so let's add a floating group okay and just pop it on there okay and it's automatically aligned to the left what we need to do is to set it to the right over there uh, we won't put anything on there for now what we will do we'll color it so that we can actually see it so we'll set it to a flat color uh, let's make it a little bit slightly gray gray color okay and we will call that We'll call that FG input for now, okay? And what we will do is we will vertically float it to both, so it, it goes from top to bottom, okay, through the whole app. Okay, so let's have a look. So the height is gonna be, I think we set it to 600, okay? That's good enough for now, we're just, we're just demonstrating this. So what we want to do then on our page, in our workflow, we've now got this. So, so we know that from somewhere, we don't know where, but something has set the action on our reusable to NC for new customer. Now what we can do is we can say we're gonna animate and we're gonna pop in our FG input. And what we need to do to get it to, to call in is we need to do one of these that's in we can do whatever we like in here let's have a look uh doesn't really matter let's say slide slide begin slide up begin slide right begin slide left begin that'll do okay oh no slide right back in right begin sorry uh right let's see what big slide right begin okay and the fact it's in means that it will show as it says there show so uh, define a custom duration we'll leave that for now okay and what that will do then is is when that condition is met it will run this action to, to display our floating group so let's us see if that works a customer Oh, sorry. What I need to do is still is saying it's uh, it's displayed. What we need to do here is we need to make that invisible on page load. Okay, it's still a fixed layout, so we need to just assign that as a column. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. We will set it as a hundred percent height in there okay so we're obviously going to make it visible when we animate it so 
Let's give that a go. And now new customer. Okay, that's worked. We haven't got a way to close it yet, but we can certainly deal with that. Uh, but the, but if you can get the point of what I'm trying to get at is this is how you got to think about reusables. That they're blind to what is going on. It can't force something to happen that's on another page. Now, if we had wanted to uh, build that as a pop up, so when they click new customer, it floating in from the from the right as it does there. It floats in like a pop up in the middle of the page. We could easily have have put that into uh, into our reusable itself. We could have embedded that, or we could have put that pop up into its own reusable and then embedded it into here okay that's a reusable within a reusable which then causes its own complexities but for this example here what we need is for the reusable to do something on the main page which it cannot do because it can't see the main page so all that we're doing is setting ourselves up with a custom state that gets set when they click the, the button and then in our main page then we set ourselves up with a do when condition is true event and then recognize what the condition is one of the beautiful things about do when a condition is true event is that you would almost think well hang on a minute if it's always looking for this condition to be true then it's always going to be popping it up because it will always be nc what once they've clicked it and the answer is to that is no because do when a condition is true recognizes when something has changed okay so in other words, it won't even it will look at that even though we've set it to run every time. Okay, it will know that it's got to wait for that condition to change. So let's say, for example, now let's go back to our design. Let's say we, that we put like a, a close icon on our floating group input. Okay, let's uh, paste that up there. Let's set that to align right and i don't know just let's we'll put some padding around here of 10 10 10 and 10. Uh, I, I won't find the icon for the for the clothes but you get the the idea uh, it's set to be where are i sorry it's set to be clickable so then we can add an event on there so we can add an event that when an icon if i clicked Okay, which iconify, I didn't name it, which was a foolish thing to do. Okay, so let's say it's LC uh, input close. So then I can then set the and iconify clicked and input close. And then what I can say on there is that to animate the animate it out. So this time I'm going to say transition oh sorry i need to set the element first uh, it's our floating group floating group input and then let's have a look at the transition so we're going to slide big right out there we go okay because it ends in out bubble knows then that it's going to hide the element okay so let's give that a go Okay, we knock it in, and then we knock it out. Okay, but notice what's happening there. This is this is exactly what I was trying to demonstrate. Nothing's happening there. The reason being because the, it hasn't changed. It's still NC. So that do when condition is true is only going to trigger when it's changed. So what you would generally do then we'd, we'd reset this in here. We'd just say set the state, and again we can access any custom state that's sat on the top level the reusable itself and not in any container within it is then accessible from outside the, the, the reusable itself so last action and then we're just going to set it to blank and then we should find that that will work new customer float that out there we go okay so we'll bring that to a close there i hope that that's introduced reusables for you a little bit We'll be doing more work with reusables, as I'm sure you'll imagine. And there's all sorts of different ways that you can think about it and all sorts of little problems that you'll find, especially if you're putting reusables within reusables, but also communicating with the main page and back again. And there is a plugin that I use all the time, which we will be using at some point, which really makes this all of this much easier. 
but for this purpose here do when a condition is true works absolutely perfectly for us so in the next one we'll move on and we'll start looking at how we can implement this customer form here as well thanks again take it easy see you in the next one